Welcome to another episode of Cayuga Lake Heritage. My name is Tony Ingram, and uh, gee, it's the middle of March, and I was out walking in the woods today, and I didn't see any flowers. I did see some patches of snow, but a lot of that snow had melted. But we're all sort of urging, we want to get spring to get going here, and it's hard to rush the planet. But there are a few things out there that are getting going. But today we have a, um, a program, there's two of us actually on the show today, and uh, my guest is Dan Klein. He is the coordinator of the Tompkins County Community Beautification Program. That's right. And uh, Dan, we're going to, what are we going to do today, Dan? Well, I'm here to bring the good news that spring has arrived, sort of. Uh, the first flowers have bloomed in Ithaca, and there's a lot more coming soon. And what I thought we'd do today is look at some of the flowers that will be coming down the line all around Ithaca. Okay, so uh, let's, let's put up some images here of that'll get uh, people all excited. Uh, what, uh, oh, there's the banner. and Tell us a little bit about the Community Beautification Program. Sure, the Community Beautification Program is funded by the county hotel room tax. So every time someone stays in a hotel room in Tompkins County, they pay an extra 5% on their bill. And that money is used for tourism purposes in our county. So it's used for signage and public art and festivals and flowers. So the Community Beautification Program basically takes care of all the public flower plantings in Ithaca. And we have myself as a full-time employee and then one part-time seasonal employee. But everyone else that takes care of the flowers in Ithaca are volunteers. Yeah, I mean, it's like you go around town in the summertime, in the spring and so forth, and you see these big, uh, 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 beds full of beautiful flowers and, and, and uh, I was like, wow, where does this all come from? Who does this? Well, this is who does this and you can do this. You can become part of the, the uh, community beautification program by contacting Dan at Cornell Co-op Extension in Tompkins County and we'll be uh, showing you how to do that later. But let's see what's been happening this month. Great. Oops, I uh, back up here. Let's see. There we go. Great. Well, we're starting in the present, or almost the present. This picture was taken about two weeks ago, and this was, as far as I know, the first flower blooming in Ithaca. These are snowdrops, and this is on one of the traffic islands around town. And just today, I saw another flower in bloom in Ithaca called winter aconite, which we don't have a photo of here. Let's so, take a look what we have here. So um, this is the next flower that you will see, at least the, f the first planted flower you will see. These are pansies, and in Ithaca, in downtown Ithaca at least, we plant them the first week of April. You know, pansies is sometimes used as a derogatory term, but it is, it is wrongly used because these flowers are tough as nails. <laughs> I have seen these things literally frozen solid, wow. and they come right back and bloom. So wow. we'll be planting these out, like I say, the first week in April. This is right on the commons. You might recognize it. Which, which end of the commons? Is this, is this the beds on the uh, east end? Or? Yes, this is on the east end, but we plant them on all three entrances to the commons. I see. Yeah. We have some others here. Yeah, so this is that exact same spot, um, maybe two months later, probably in late June or July. And those are petunias that we plant there every year. And we plant those because they, they trail nicely. They kind of flow over the sides. And if you look carefully at the base of those um, cement blocks, you'll see some petunias growing out from, from right from the sidewalk. And those are all volunteers. And what I mean by that is seeds from the past have dropped down there and fallen into the cracks and found a little bit of soil and started growing and have grown long enough to bloom. Taken over by petunias, hey, I could uh, imagine much worse things than that. Well, right. Let's see what we have here now. Who are these folks doing? So these are some of our volunteers, and this is um, a, a program that we do in mid, early to mid-May, and it's a business planting. So there's about 100 of these planters that we will plant in front of area businesses, and we, we, we have a deal with the businesses. They provide the planter and the soil, and we come along with the plants and the labor and plant it for them, and then they have to water it the rest of the year. So over 100 of these are planted each year. It makes a big impact. And this is what some of the, this is one, one site, one of the business planters looks like later on the season. Last year, um, you may have noticed the fountain that was on the commons was decommissioned. Uh, basically, there had been a lot of vandalism all the time. They couldn't keep the thing repaired. So um, instead of continuing to, to spend money on it, we filled it in with soil and we planted it. So this is what it looked like when it was planted. And then a few months later, when it had all grown in, 
It was this big, lush, beautiful thing. Wow. This was the first year for this planting, that. and we we're hoping to do it again this year, and hopefully it'll be quite just as dramatic. Well, you know, it's amazing because, uh, you know, 200 years ago, the south end of Cuca Lake was wild. You know, it was, it was, uh, um, there was, it was woods, there was uh, wildflowers, there was animals and so forth. And then people came along and they filled the uh, swamp and they cut down all the trees and they built the roads and built the buildings. And so nature really wasn't there anymore. But uh, now that you've come along with uh, your community beautification program, oops, get back here, I don't want to lose that one. And um, you're bringing nature back. Uh, it's it's uh, you know, cultivated plants and so forth, but very appropriate to fit right into our uh, built environment here and uh, uh, beautify um, our town and our community. Yeah, that's that's the goal of the program is to make things look good. And again, you know, the tourists are paying for it, but we we also get to enjoy it, which is a nice benefit. And um, so we have um, the the beds themselves. Then we also have these wooden planters around um, that we fill up, especially on the commons, to so that we can get flowers into areas that otherwise couldn't really support them because of the trees and other limitations. Let's see what we got here. This is City Hall, this is Ithaca City Hall. We just started um, this last year. This is, that was the first year we really took care of it. Um, so this is just a, a, you know, a combination of perennials and annuals. But also I just drove by there today to see if the daffodils are blooming yet. And they're not quite, but maybe by the time you hear this program they might be because usually the first daffodils in Ithaca bloom at the Ithaca City Hall. Uh -huh. So moving off the commons a little bit, this is at the bottom of the State Street Hill, right across the street from where Challenge Industries used to be. And what you're looking at is a bunch of tulips. So that the tulips will start blooming sometime in April. And we use, in most of our plantings, we use four varieties of red tulip. But the varieties bloom sequentially, so that there's this constant show for three or sometimes even four weeks. Wow. And this is that same spot uh -huh. um, later on in the summer. After the tulips have bloomed and they die down, and then we go ahead and plant annuals and a few perennials in there. If you can make out the tall plant on the right, that's a big lily. Those are perennials here. They come back every year. Right. This is right across the street from that. This is a, a traffic island that's... Is this where Green Street splits and all that, or I get that wrong? Yeah, where Green, where Green and State Street come together. It's also called the Tuning Fork for yes, those people yes, that, that yes. know that area. And this is one of our um, best plantings. It gets some of the most traffic of any of them, and people stop at the, have to stop at the red light a lot and yeah, gaze, at, a, gaze at our flowers. It's such a wonderful thing. You're stuck there in traffic, and all of a sudden you can look out, and you don't care that you're stuck at a light, red light and have to wait for you know, all this traffic. It doesn't matter because it, you're there with this incredible beauty just just washing over you it's amazing it's really great we're, we're out on the side of the road working a lot and people stop strangers stop and thank us all the time and i, I can't really think of another job where strangers strangers stop and thank you right. so it's right. a, another good reason to volunteer this flower is the california poppy and yeah. it's not commonly used here in the east and we've been experimenting with it it's probably about four years now and they're really great. I really recommend these plants if you have a sunny, dry spot. Um, they, so we seeded them once, and then after that they self-seed, meaning the flowers produce seeds, and they fall on the, on the ground, and then those seeds sprout and bloom again. Hmm. And they spread, too. So this was a handful of seed that we sprinkled around maybe four years ago, and now... Um, it's almost solid of California poppies. So it's a perennial. It'll keep coming back like it's, this. It's not technically a perennial because it, it has to go to seed first and drop the seeds, but it self-seeds, which is another way so that plants propagate themselves. It survives the winter, though, themselves. the self-seeding. That's right, yeah. the seeds. Oh, okay. And uh, as I said, it's very underutilized here, and I, I really can't re recommend it enough for uh, dry, sunny spots. Right, right. You must do a, a lot of planning to uh, be able to plant all these beds and and uh, choose the plants that you're going to get and the seeds and so forth. Do you do you use any you, know, you do some uh, any planting of actual um, things that have been started in the greenhouse? You know, yes, we do start things in the greenhouse. We'll be starting those also right around the first of April, mm -hmm. and uh, we rent greenhouse space up at Cornell, uh -huh. and we only use it for about six or seven weeks. That's all. If, that's all we get. Um, that's all we need. That gives the plants a good head start, and then we put them out, and they look good right away. Right. And as far as planning, you know, we've over the years we have figured out what plants work and what plants don't, and so we're always experimenting. But 
we have some good standbys that we know will work all the time. Right, right. So now we have a picture here coming up. What, what is, is this? What is that? Is that the moon? Is that <laughs> the eye of a housefly? What is that? It looks like the side of a cactus or something out in <laughs> Arizona. <laughs> right. This is um, this is uh, these are tulips that were planted last fall, and so I mentioned before about the four Easter varieties. <laughs> yeah, they do look like an egg crate. Um, so we have these four varieties, and we want to we want to alternate them so that we're not so they're spread out more or less evenly over the planting area. So I dig these holes, and then I, I have four bags, and label one through four, and I make sure they get spread out. And I want to show you this because there's always more stuff coming. We have planted probably six or 7,000 tulip bulbs over the last five years, and just last year we probably planted another, I don't know, 500 or 1,000. Right. So you have to get together quite a, lot, quite a few people to, uh, to do all this. How many volunteers do you get? Well, we probably have 40 volunteers, and they, they don't all show up at once, which is good because we ca probably couldn't fit them all in one place at right. one time. Um, we typically get uh, five to ten volunteers at each work session, uh -huh. mm -hmm. and we're always looking for new volunteers. In fact, we have a training coming up, and we'll, we'll give some information about that in a little while. Last fall, we tried something new. Um, we, I call it Crocus Focus. This is right across from the Cass Park Ice Rink. You might recognize that spot on Route 89. And we planted 10,000 crocus bulbs right in the lawn. And there's, they stretch up the road a little bit. And, you know, I'm pretty sure it's going to work. It's a bit of an experiment. I'm, the deer might eat a lot of them, or they might not. It might be 10,000 might be too many for them. So I think this is going to work. In fact, this show, you know, they're not blooming yet, but by the time you see this show, they might be blooming. Uh -huh. And if, they, if it works well, my goal is to continue planting along Route 89, maybe another 5,000 this year and every year until we have 100,000 crocus, wow. plus they're going to divide themselves, so someday we'll have a million crocus. Well, keep your eyes out along Route 89 then for this. Yeah, this and we're coming up soon. And we'll put it on our website Little. as soon as it blooms. Um, All right. On our, our, if you just Googled um, Beautification Brigade, you'd be able to find us. We'll also flash the website up later on. And we're also about to do a Facebook page, um, and that's the kind of information we can get out quickly, you know, because these, these crocus, a lot of these spring flowers only bloom for a couple of days. Let's see if we can get that uh, website information up here. Oh, great. There we go. So uh, if, you, if you were to go on this website, you'd find out a lot of information. You'd see a lot of photos of different plantings that we've done. And you'd also find out how to volunteer, how to be part of the Beautification uh -huh. Brigade. Great. All right, let's see if we can get some of these uh, flower images back here. I got out of my sequence I was planning here. We, uh, okay, coming up. All right, so here we, what are, where are we here? Okay, where are we here? This, so I mentioned that the beautification program takes care of all the public flower plantings in Ithaca in downtown, but we do a couple of other things. We give money to the rural towns for them to do their own beautification projects, and then we also have the garden tours, and a lot of people, every year we get about five or 600 people to come on the garden tours. This year the garden tour is on June 11th. It's a Saturday, and it's called the Open Days Garden Tour, and we have three gardens open. These are private gardens that are open for that one day only. Wow. It costs $5 per person per garden, but these are special gardens. These are gardens that are worth $5. Trust me. You, <laughs> you will not leave disappointed. Wow. This is what? June what? June 11th this year, June 11th, from 10 so to 4. So we would keep our eyes out, maybe check your website, or that sort of thing. Yes, and, uh, and also the Open Days Garden Tour is a part of, we're part of a national program. All over the country they do these garden tours on different days. I see. So ours is June 11th, June 11th but okay. when, you, when you go to other I, when I travel, I always look for these garden tours. It's a great... Now, are these all um, close to Ithaca, or are they out, any of them out farther out in the county? Or? Uh, they're in the county. They're yeah. all in the county, uh -huh. not downtown necessarily. Yeah. Uh, this yeah. year I don't think we have any downtown. Some years we do. Right, right. So um, these are, there's some photos of the Beautification Brigade in action. These are our volunteers. You notice that they're all wearing orange. It's not a coincidence. Right. Um, so you, you've, you may have seen these people around town. And again, these are volunteers that just want to help with the, with the flower beds around town. There's no real commitment. Basically, I would put your, if you're interested in volunteering, I'd put your name on an email list. And at the beginning of the week, you would get an email. Mm -hmm. that says where we're working that week. And uh, you can show up or not. So you get it. You get an email and say you could just show up for any of the projects or none. Yeah, no, we we have no. people that have been on our email list that have never shown up, and that's okay because it doesn't cost me anything in time or money to put you on my email list. Right, so right, you, right. And we also we do take all ages. Uh, if if you're this young, you want to come with a with an adult. Um, but we have we have high school kids, we have some college kids, and we have. Um, 
people in their 70s. Do you have any uh, like clubs or, or um, groups that uh, sort of sign up for the, to take a shift or that sort of thing? Right? Yes, people contact us periodically, uh, community groups that want to do some kind of special project and sometimes we're able to accommodate them, sometimes they're not, we're not, but I encourage you to contact me and we'll see if, we, if there's mm -hmm. something we can arrange. And it's really fun, you get a group of people together to plant a bunch of bulbs or even weed a, a, an area, you know, it's fun when it's a big group of people. Right. Right. Do you get garden clubs involved? Not really. It's more like schools and churches and other interest groups that uh, want to do something like this just for the day. There's your daffodils. Yes, those are, that's a first year planting. You can see they're kind of thin. They might look kind of thin. They look thin to me at least. But daffodils, most, daffodil, most of the daffodils will multiply, as will the tulips that we take care of. Uh -huh. um, they multiply. And so the first year they look a little thin. The next year they hopefully are double, and, and they just keep going after that. Well, I live in the edge nicer, of the nicer. woods, and whoever owned the house before me planted some daffodils, and they seem to have moved into the woods. So we have a few daffodil uh, colonies out there. Yeah, some kinds of daffodils can take shade and other ones yeah. uh, need a little more sun, especially if, if you want them to divide and keep going. But they're like your spring wildflowers in the woods that they, they bloom, yeah, they bloom and their foliage comes up before the leaves close in, so maybe they're taking advantage of that or something. That's right. And, um, you know, just a little hint for, for daffodils is uh, if you want your daffodils to last from year to year, you should not cut down the foliage after the flowers are done. Mm -hmm. You should leave it until they completely dry down by themselves, which is usually in June. Mm -hmm. So it looks a little ugly for a while, but if you plant other things around it, you can kind of hide that. And if you do that, it'll help your, your daffodils survive long term. Yeah, because then their leaves can actually be continued to make sugars and starch and store it in the root. That's and right. And have the, the food they need for the next season. Exactly. Where are we here? We're in front of the Women's Community Building. Um, it's you know right along Seneca Street, so it's a very public place. You know. Because we're funded with tourism money, we try we, we do our projects in very public places, places where tourists might go. So main streets, public buildings, uh, etc. And here we are on the commons. We do a lot of work on the commons. I kind of mentioned this before. The commons is a difficult place to work because if you take a look around, you'll see that every planter, all the cement planters have trees in them. Uh -huh. yeah. Ooh, yeah. Kind of imagine like a flower pot that already has a plant in it and then trying to put another plant in with it. It wouldn't do very well. And that's right. what's going on here. The trees have been in there for up to 30 years, and their roots have completely filled those planters. And so it's difficult to plant flowers underneath them, which is why we put these wooden planters out to kind of right. have some root-free areas and some shade-free right, right. areas. Do you have problems with uh, people picking the flowers on the commons? There's or? a small amount of vandalism, but it's, it's really uh, pretty low. Yo, Most flower pickers. <laughs> yeah, occasionally. Uh, people, there's, yeah, there's definitely been some picking and some digging and some just outright vandalism but it's really pretty small amount yeah and the joy that it brings to people is just just unmeasurable yeah, thank you yeah we uh we definitely get 99 percent positive feedback about what we do there's always a handful of people that have very specific opinions about what should be out there but most people really appreciate it Look at all these folks out there. They seem such happy people and such healthy, happy people. They love to be doing what they're doing. And uh, they're not getting paid. They're getting the, the satisfaction of creating all this beauty for the community. And then they can go by and admire their work and, and know that everyone else is, too. That's right. They get, they get a couple things out of it. I mean, it is just fun to, to dig and plant and weed, and especially in a group when you're in a group. But also, uh, they, they learn. People learn things about gardening along the way. Mm -hmm. And also, because these are public places, they get to pass them all the time and their family and friends get to pass them and they can point at them and brag and say I did that. Yeah. It's funny when you're a volunteer on, on uh, some kind of public property like this you get to you get access to these beds that you can work and you know do your magic in and so forth whereas otherwise it would be something you wouldn't touch so it really does uh, give you something uh, that you wouldn't have otherwise. Now this is a this is <laughs> what the heck is going on here, Dan? <laughs> this is uh, a, pro a project of cooperative extension that we've done the last few years, and we'll m most likely do it again this year in June, where people can bring their used flower pots oh. and we recycle them. Um, oh, okay. So you know, so check our website. We don't have we don't uh, isn't confirmed yet that we're going to do it this year, but hopefully we will. And so we just decided to pose in among the pots and for a goofy shot. So you can bring them to be recycled, and also you can come and take whatever you want. Now, when you say they recycle, they actually you know, ground up and made into 
yes. picnic tables or whatever it is they do. They're made into plastic lumber, which um, it's, it's low quality plastic lumber because it's uh, it's got all these different <laughs> different types of plastic in there, different colors and debris right. and such. But mostly what they have been being used for is um, nailing board, backing board for the Panama Canal. They're expanding the Panama Canal, and they need a lot of this. Is that uh, a good thing? Or we, <laughs> we don't well, know. <laughs> it's, it's better than using wood to do yeah, it, right, um, right, because right. if they were, they used to use wood, and that's oh, yeah. a whole other set of trees that would have to be cut down. True. So at least yeah. this is getting at least one more use out of it, and maybe more. So, so there you go. Better than not doing it. So let's just gonna we're gonna go to some of that uh, information again here. It'll get us back up on the screen here, but I want to. Get us to the how to get involved uh, screens. Let's see. So again, we um, uh, gotta get that. We right. have a full-time me, full-time employee, and one part-time seasonal employee, and the rest of us are volunteers. The, the rest of the people out there are working on these beds are volunteers. And if you're interested in volunteering, there is no experience necessary, and we provide the tools and the gloves and the instructions, and we let you know where we'll be where we'll be working that week. And if you're interested, you can contact the number that's on the screen. You can look on our website. You could Google Beautification Brigade. You'd find us. And we've got these trainings coming up. We've got the dates there, March 22nd and March 28th. And if you're interested in attending the training, if you can let me know ahead of time, that would be really helpful. OK, great. Well, we have a few more minutes. We'll go back and uh, look at some of these other uh, beautiful pictures here. We'll get back to where, where, where. That's where we go. Aha. Uh, this is um, a type of oriental poppy, which is a perennial, and it's a very unusual. This is a very unusual one. This particular color combination along the creek walk there, along creek walk behind the library. Yeah, mm -hmm. and these only bloom for about three or four days. Um, so I try to spread the word, but um, when should I be looking for those? I walk there a lot. Uh, mid early early to mid June. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's say early June. And um, that's the kind of information that I'm going to, going to try to spread more through a website and Facebook page. Uh -huh, yeah. This is, is another the Facebook page up. Uh, it is up. Uh, Beautification Brigade, it's called. All right. Yep. All right. I'll definitely uh, sign up. Great. And this is another interesting plant. Uh, this is also in the same spot in that creek walk, and this is a plant called Mina lobata. That's the Span the uh, Latin name, and, and the uh, common name is Spanish flag, although it's not that commonly used. Huh. And you're basically looking at two plants here, just two individual plants that spread out about 30 feet. This huh. is an annual vine that flowers for sometimes two months, and this is an underutilized plant that I can't recommend enough for a sunny spot where is you want to find creek walk or is this, this is also creek walk. Yeah. This is that little that bridge you see in the background goes over to the courthouse and to the police right, station. Right, right. Would the creek would be on the left here or would it be on the... It's on yeah. the left, below yeah, the bridge, the yep. Yeah, so sure. it's behind the library. Yeah. 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 Oh, I, like, I like this one a lot. Nice. A lot of people might know this one. This is uh, over by Purity Ice Cream. We call it Purity Point because it kind of divides the two one-way sections of Route 13. And those are a solid zinnia planting along there. And that's we plant the same thing there every year. Some A lot of places we switch up, we try new things, but the zinnias work so well there that we keep planting the same thing every year. So there's um, wow. you know, probably 75 plants there. So what would be the season on them? They're, they're all, the, so most of the plants I've been showing you are annuals. And the reason we use annuals is because they bloom the entire season. So hmm. this will bloom from the time we put it out, which will be uh, sometime in May or early June, all the way till the frost, till wow. or the, at least the end of September, at least. Well, I'll go down there and get an ice cream and go out and take a look. Yeah, <laughs> excellent. This is a site we took over a few years ago at the Friends of the Library book sale site. And um, so they have their, their sale twice a year. They have it in May and they have it in October. So we wanted to plant something that would look good at both those times wow. of year. So there's a tulip planting for the May time, which is what you're looking at. And um, and you can see those tents in the background. Those are the people that are camping overnight so they can be first in line the next day for the book those sale. Those are the serious readers. Yes. And then we planted uh, ornamental cabbage there that, that huh. one of the few, one of the really the only things that reliably look good in October. So. Right. This is the bus station. I mentioned that this is fun, program is funded by tourism money, and so we want the entrances to town to look good. And mm. this is the, but, the Greyhound bus station. So when people yeah. come by bus, the first thing hopefully they'll see is a, or one of the first things they'll see is this flower bed and think, ah, oh, I think it's a place that takes care of itself, that wants yeah. to look good. Do you have any flower beds over on the bridge um, on 89 that goes over the inlet? Is there flower beds associated with that? Or? 
Um, we use, there's there's a flower bed at the Jewel Box, a private business that we used yeah. to do, and they, they took it over. Okay. And then on the other side of the bridge is the Ithaca Children's Garden. Yes, yes. And that's also the area now where we planted those crocus, so hopefully yes. that'll be an entrance right, to the Right, but yeah, we saw the, the uh, Welcome to Ithaca and Tompkins yes. County sign. Yeah. This is an interesting little spot. It's called Van Horn Park, and most people don't know it as a park. It's right on Taganic Boulevard, and it is uh, across from K&H Bottle Redemption Center. Oh, yes, yes. And it's just a strip of greenery along the, along the inlet there. And up until about 10 years ago, it was being used by a private business as a parking lot. And the city forester at the time, Andy Hillman, yes. uh, did a little research and discovered that this was actually designated city parkland. Huh. So he worked to help reclaim it, and we've plant they planted trees, and we've planted annuals well, and great. perennials, and took it over into a nice, beautiful green strip. Wow. This is the traffic circle, or the rotary, some people call it. And um, and we every year we do a big planting. It's 150 feet around, and we, we keep trying different things around there, so look for for what we're doing this year. And then I can also mention that on the cliff, uh, it's kind of, a cliff might be an exaggeration, but that slope up above the traffic circle, right. they, did, they did some work on it last year, yeah. and we were able to plant weeping for Scythia there. Huh. And I'm hoping they take, we'll find out this year if they took. Yeah. And so it's not going to look like much yet, but I'm hoping in 10 years, 20 years, that it's a very dramatic spring planting, that the whole cliff or a big chunk of the cliff will be covered in yellow flowers. Well, I'm in my 80s, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see what we got here. This is up in College Town on Dryden Road, and this is a, this is a tulip planting. This is what it looks like a first year. It, again, it looks to me it looks a little thin, but um, if our experience holds, all those individual tulips are going to double and be two tulips this year, wow. and three tulips next year, and and it's going to really look full and, and beautiful. And then later on in the year, that same area looks like this. So these are various annuals that are planted in there, tropicals and annuals, canna and amaranth, wow. all kinds of stuff. Wow, that's, that is amazing. And th this was last year. We tried to do a, a red planting for Big Red for Cornell, but I don't think we're going to do that again this year. Maybe we'll do a yellow planting on it. Right. Here's a yellow planting. Here's a yellow planting. This is one of the few places where we have perennials. This is, uh, it's kind of a hard place to describe. It's down on, um, um, down off Route 13 on Old Elmira Road, yeah, and, yeah, and, but a block off there, and and so the neighbors uh, sort of reclaimed this traffic island. It was just gravel, and they asked the city to dig it up and put soil in there. And then, w working with the neighbors, we put these plants in. And briefly, these are all perennials. So for the gardeners out there, there's a big difference between perennials and annuals. Annuals bloom all year. Perennials bloom just for a short time. So in this perennial planting, we had to you know, have to put a variety in to get bloom the whole time, the whole season. All right, so we'll just look at the information again. Great. Um, so, yeah, this is uh, Community Beautification Program contact information, all kinds of information on our website, photos and information about the plantings and how to volunteer. And we have these upcoming trainings, March 22nd and March 28th. And um, if you're interested in volunteering, contact me and I'll let you know.